You two. What's all that running about? Running about? Who's running about? The bastard's driven off with it. What? Gee, it's my little I thought it was. Looks like it. Yeah. Step out the car, please. Is this your car, sir? Well, well, no. But Surprise me. Yeah, well, hold on a minute. Hey. And shine. It's your early morning. It's your early morning courtesy call. I'm very courteous. The boss wants his money, lover boy. And now. I haven't got the money. Did you hear something, Ginger? I did, Fred. I heard something. You know what? You're gonna get measured for a concrete suit if you don't get the money up, love toy. Honestly, you gotta believe me. I haven't got any money. You gotta give me time. Time is what you ain't got, love holes. That's right, babe. He ain't worth a hill of beans in this whole goddamn world. You said it. Charlie, I quit the rackets. You won't hear another peep out of me. You hear that, Slim? I heard it. But I don't like it. Me neither. You've got to give me time. We got to give you nothing. What's this? <laughs> a horse of a different water. Saddle up, love toss. <laughs> Ain't they cute? I've got no money. I've got the money. Don't mumble. I hate mumbling. I've brought you some tea, love joy. Hmm? And a Mr. Tinker called. Right, love, Joy. Top of the world, Mum. Top of the world. Name? Well, it's me. You know me. Eric. Take your belt off. Your trousers will fall down. Get them off. But you say that to all the boys. Off. All right, all right. Sorry. All right, all right. Right, let's start again. Name? Eric. Eric's been arrested. How do you manage that? Oh, search me. <coughs> They've got him incarcerated down the local neck. Probably a bald tire on the Harley. Oh, Lovejoy, we've got to get him out. I know him. He'll panic. He'll hate the food. He'll upset the cooks because the, he won't eat it. He'll hang himself. He'll, he'll bash his head against the wall. I know what he's like. Calm down, will you? Where's Janie? Oh, that's the problem. Janie telephoned him and asked him to pick up the Range Rover from the station. Said she'd call him tomorrow and tell him where to collect her. What's she up to? I don't know, but the police must have made a mistake when they stopped him. They probably think he stole the Range Rover. No, they couldn't be that daft. Come on, let's sort this out. I wonder where Janie is. Ah! We hear about Eric Catchpole. We believe he's here, Sergeant, for a minor traffic offence. I'm sure there's been a mix-up, sir. Love just joy. Looked... You know, the gentleman in question is of excellent character and of sound mind. Sound sound. But he wouldn't hurt a fly. The, the, the point is, Sergeant, that he was in the vehicle with the complete consent and permission of the owner. He is a very, very good driver and totally... You must have some information for us, love. Oh, no. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, not without a lawyer. Oh, you think you may need one? No, no, I'm just here as a concerned citizen helping a fellow victim. I mean, friend. No, I'm sure it can all be cleared up quite quickly. Let's hope so. What's all this about a traffic offence? Well, we heard that Eric had been nicked for taking and driving away, sir. Well, he hasn't. Oh, 
Well, that's all cleared up. We can all go home, then. Yeah, it does clear up that aspect of the case, yeah. There's another aspect of the case. Well, it's a mere trifle, really. That just leaves us the matter of the stolen property. Precious artefacts found in the possession of the alleged perpetrator, namely in the boot of the said vehicle. Well, I'm sure there's a perfectly simple explanation for the precious artefacts found in the boot of the said vehicle. And I'm sure there's an equally simple explanation for the fact that your dabs are all over the aforementioned goods, love, Jordan. The colonel called me Thursday last, told me he was thinking of selling some stuff. Would I come over and give him a valuation, which I did. Any good stuff? Not bad, not spectacular, but it accounts for my fingerprints being all over it. Mm. And you're sure this is the Colonel silverware? Yeah, this is some of it. Right, well, as usual, Lovejoy, it's a convincing explanation. Convincing because it's true. It still doesn't explain how the Colonel silverware found its way into the back of Lady Jane's Range Rover. Now... Can't help you there. All I do know is that Eric wouldn't have anything to do with it either. Mm. Well, your estimation of Eric's character is touchingly optimistic, love, Joy. What about Lady Jane? What about it? Well, stolen gear was found in the back of her car. Lady Jane is cat burglar. You're going soft, Dennis. Yes, all right, all right. I'm going to let you go, love, Joy. Oh, thank you. Just do me a favour. Don't take any trips abroad, all right? And listen. We're going to have to hold friend Eric. He's still got some questions need answering. And let's just hope that the Colonel corroborates your story. He will. Oh, where's Eric? Are oh, they not going to let him go? How are you, Veronica? Yeah, long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm calling you to see if you know where Jane is. I'm trying to contact her on a business matter. You've no idea where she is. Hmm? I'll give you a ring. Bye, Veronica. <laughs> Love, Joy, I hardly think this is the time for romantic entanglements. I was phoning to find out if she knew where Jane is. She didn't. In fact, nobody does. This person might. Have you managed to locate the Colonel? No, he's out as well. Well, maybe they're off together. Well, give me a break. Oh, I forgot. This bloke's been trying to get in touch with you. A bloke called Connaught wants an evaluation with a prospect of a sale. He lives on the other side of Dunno. The address is there. Well, I hope I've conveyed the seriousness with which the Fang views these matters. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I'm in the hands of head office. Yeah, I'm sure you are, Mr. Crookshank. Yes, yeah, be sorry for you to lose your house. Oh. Well, goodbye then, and we'll be in touch shortly. No doubt. No doubt. Mr. Connor. Yes? I'm Lovejoy. You've been looking for me. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Come in. Yes. Drink? Uh, no, I'll pass for now, thank you. How do you hear about me? No oh, word gets around. They say you've got the best nose in the area for knickknacks and the like. Uh, the stuff's in the cellar. Shall we go and take a look? After you, sir. Wing commander, actually. to get short of it because my wife's just died and uh, I'm retiring to Spain. Where'd you get this? Well, my wife was always very interested in antiques. She picked the whole lot up from a synagogue up north somewhere, um, Leeds or Manchester, I think. She paid quite a lot for it, I seem to remember. You have provenance. I have what? Provenance, you know, history, origin, where it comes from, that sort of thing. No, not a thing, I'm afraid. My wife, of course, was not a professional dealer. Do you have a bill of sale? No, I'm not a thing, I'm afraid. I mean, to her, this would be just, you know, going shopping. 
But I think the stuff is, you know, right, as you fellows say. There's quite a few hallmarks if you take a look. I have. This is specialised stuff. You probably do better at an auction, you know. No. No, private. My commission is 25%. 25%? 22 and a half. 20. Done. It is terrible. All walled up in here. I can't cope for thinking about you, Eric. Well, don't worry, I'll pull through. Oh, come on, Tink, don't take on like that. But I can't help it. It'll all come out in the wash, won't it? Eric, I got you cheese and onion because they hadn't got any beef. Eh? <coughs> I hope you enjoy it. Because it may be your last. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Don't come anymore if you're going to make stupid jokes. Sorry, Eric. Feel good, do you? Arresting an innocent man? Hey? Eh? like a South American police state. Innocents screaming at night as they're dragged from their law-abiding beds and flung into football stadiums to be tortured. Hold on a minute. Oh, that's a bit OTT. When are you going to let him go? He didn't do it, you know. There's no torture unless you count the food they have to eat. And if he's innocent, he'll be out, all right? Anyway, what makes you think he's so innocent? Where I'm standing, you don't look it. But he can't help how he looks. He's not the type. He couldn't organise begging your pardon a piss-up in a brewery. He hasn't the intellectual capability to deal with it. Oh, yeah? And how do you know that? Because I work with him, man and boy, shoulder to shoulder. Cheers. Sharing a chisel. And I have, to my cost, a minute understanding of his capacities. Uh -huh. Is that so? How is he on, uh, electronics? <laughs> Rewiring a 13-amp plug would stretch his abilities to the limit. Some would say beyond. Mm. Well, that's interesting. Because most of these robberies involved in capacitating burglar alarms. Do you mean disabling them? Exactly. <laughs> That's enough. They couldn't even take the cover off, never mind dewire anything. Listen, I'm uh, speaking strictly off the record, of course. So whatever happened to habeas corpus? I gave it the elbow. Listen. The law grinds slowly, but it grinds very, very small. If he's innocent, he'll be out, all right? He'd better be. Or you'll have an insurrection on your hands. <laughs> What, in Essex? Read your history books. Well, the Colonel came through and vouched for the fact that it is valuation for him. We've got to get Eric out on bail. Did you see him this morning? Uh, no, it's a bit sad, actually. Well, it's unfortunate. I didn't get to see him. Why not? Oh, I didn't get up in time, actually. Oh, love, Joy. Oh, there's Janie now. Yoo-hoo! I wish she's been she enjoyed herself. What happened to the Range Rover? He'll tell you. Well. So the police get to keep the Range Rover. And Eric. <laughs> Poor Eric. Never mind. We'll get both back in due course. <laughs> you enjoy your trip? Oh, lovely. Well, wherever you went, you look as if you enjoyed yourself. Oh, yes. Somewhere nice, was it? Mm. Where we know? <laughs> oh, <clears throat> Lady Felsham. How kind of you to drop by. Yes, how can I help? Well, um, we would like to establish that you gave uh, permission for a person to collect and uh, drive away your car. Yes. And, uh, well, if it's, uh, well, it wouldn't be too much of a problem, we'd like to, uh, well, it would help us. To know where I was in the intervening period? Exactly. Certainly. Could we perhaps step through here? Yes, of course, please. Oh, 
No, Tink. Well, they give me my belt back. Of course they gave you your belt back. What do you think they are? A bunch of thieves? I don't know what's there. What you need comes in a tall glass and is to be found at the White Hart. So, well, where's Lady Jane? You can thank her later. Come on. Come on. Out. <coughs> well, how are huh? you going to try? Come on, Jay. No, no, I'll call Abbots. They'll take care of it. Oh, all right. Where are you going? What? Shortcut. Oh, well. <laughs> Why not? Thank you. <coughs> Janie? No. Well, no what? I know what you're going to ask, love Joy. Because you don't know what I was going to ask yes, you. Yes, I do, no, and I'm not going to tell you. All I was going to ask you is what time is it, Jenny? Oh, love Joy, my bag in the back. A remarkable collection of pre-war Judaica. Mm -hmm. A wide variety of objects, most of them in terrific nick. Definitely something you should see, Mr. Sol. Yeah, I could bring out some photographs for you to look at tomorrow. Tomorrow it is. Bye. Janie. No, my name. I will not forget this until I have cleared my name of its stain. Eric, it doesn't matter. Nobody's bothered. Oh, uh, you're just taking a Michael now. Uh, look, he's coming to get me again, Tink. No, Tink. he's not. <coughs> it's my name. Now look what you've done. Solomon? Junior. I'm Lovejoy. This is my friend, Lady Felsham. You're expecting me. Oh, please come in. Father, this is Lovejoy, Lady Felsham. Come to talk about the... Pleasure, Mr. Solomon. Solomon. Pleasure. Would the lady like a glass of tea? No, thank you. Uh, tell me, madam, are you, uh, are you in the trade? Sort of. I'm an interior decorator. Oh, oh, uh, perhaps you'd like to talk to my wife, eh? Yes, OK, if you like. Just while I speak to Lovejoy. Uh, Jonathan, show the lady through to the kitchen, will you? You're like my mother. Uh. Please, please. Mm. Well, what have you got for me? Have a look at these. <coughs> Here's the list. Very busy. May I ask how you come by this collection? It's a private collector. This collector has provenance and documentation. He has some history, yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Yes. It's, uh, it's interesting. 
Very interesting is right. We only moved in four months ago and I have to live with it every day. You want to know what this does for me? I won't even tell you. For convenience, it's horrible. <laughs> now, do you want to look at these? Yes, you're right. It's not very practical. Now, what sort of thing do you like? Sie ist für so rot dumm, ne? Das kommt von der Schule, von der Heim. Emmes? Emmes, das ist so, der Emmes, das ist so. Man darf das Warte sehen. Would you excuse us a moment, Mr. Lovejoy? Interessant, ne? Can you bring it up to London for us to have a look at? Oh, no, 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 no. We drive down, no. I must meet this collector. I must see the packaging. I want to see it exactly as he has it. No, no. Would you give my son the address? We drive down today. Yes, I must see the boxes, the dust, everything. Very, very important. Meet me here, four o'clock. Mr. Solomon. Mr. Lovejoy. Uh. Why are you so keen on going all the way up there, Father? Who owns this private collection, eh? How'd you get on? I'll tell you after I make this phone call. It's all right if I stay in the car, is it? <laughs> Hello, Wing Commander. It's Lovejoy. I'm bringing a Mr. Solomon and his son down this afternoon to look at the collection. Four o'clock. Top expert in Judek. Oh, I see. I hadn't, um... Well, I didn't... What, this afternoon, you say? That's right. Well, these Solomons, I don't know them. Well, you wouldn't, would you? Hmm? No. No, of course not. But look, can't you take it to them? They want to see it exactly as it is in the pictures. You know, they also want to ask you a couple of questions, which is normal with a collection like this. Solomon, you say? The problem is? No. No, no, no. Fine, I'll see you this afternoon, four o'clock. Mm. Not exactly overjoyed. Get away. Bob Truscott, the gardener at Semple Grange, told me they've just been turned over for all their silver, including a beautiful set of silver framed miniatures. Somebody is doing the district. Oh my God, they'll try and stitch me up for it. You just wait. No, they won't. You're totally innocent, Eric. You'll forget about it. I can't forget about it. It's my name. It's my father's name. I hope so. <laughs> I have to clear my name. You don't have to clear your name, Eric. Everyone round here knows you didn't do it. You couldn't. Yeah, she's right, Eric. Let sleeping dogs die. Hmm? It's not right, is it? No, Eric, Eric, no. You take this off, you see, because you put the water in there and you filter steam into the cup and it's lovely. Hmm. Ah. Eric, <coughs> here's 50 quid, right? Uh, Go to Abbott's and pick up my truck. Meet me back here in an hour and a half. I've got to see the Solomons, OK? Right. Abbott's. Right. Abbott's. Oh, God. Abbott's, Abbott's. Abbott's. He's going to worry himself to death, that boy. No, he's not. Why not? He's too hungover. <laughs> How are you? I'm looking at the house. Well, I can see that. What for? We're in security. Just wondering how you were fixed. Uh -huh. Don't be too careful nowadays. We deal in alarms, lighting, video surveillance, anything you like. Worth it for a sound night's sleep. And that's a fact. <laughs> you got any samples? Uh, not really. We were just passing. We could drop back if you're interested. Oh, you got any cards then? Or... Lord, we're all out. How maddening. <laughs> maddening, yeah. Well, I'm really into security, so why don't you come up to the house and tell me all about it? Certainly. Security is uh, peace of mind. Security is uh, sleeping sound. Security is... It's very tricky, you know. 
Is that, uh, you know, who's that? The owner. Why? Ah. We're a bit pushed for time, I think. Uh, <laughs> definitely. But we will definitely pop back sometime. Definitely. Right. More like this, are there, Wing Commander? Oh, yes, lots. It's a whole collection. Oh, this uh, Lovejoy character. Did he uh, say anything about the collection? Um, Did he say who his buyer was? Well, only that his name was Solomon. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'll sell them for you, for a commission. On the phone, you said you might buy them. Uh, might, yes. Ah, but you have no provenance. And seeing that Lovejoy's involved, well, that might put people off. No, I think we'll do it my way, shall we? Usually works out for the best. Brandy? Oh, thank you. Sorry, I'm late, Mr. Solomon. Small problem with transport. Bloody Eric. Here we are. So, you, uh, have a nice trip up? Hmm? Oh, my good lord. There's a wing commander in. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I think she's going to have a heart attack. I just do for him. You, you can't come in. We have an appointment. Oh, you me. You've come about the repossession, have you? Repossession? The house. No, no, no. We're not here to repossess anything. We're here to buy. I'm Lovejoy. I'm selling the Wing Commander's antiques. This sale could um, save the house. Are you sure? No. Because he had to go out, you see. You let me show these gentlemen the antiques. We could make a big sale. We could make the difference. Well, you'd better come in. century. See the mark, the little half moon? Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do I, uh, how do I know this stuff isn't stolen? I'm a dealer, not a fence. Oh, no insult meant, Mr. Lovejoy. It's a bit strange to have these rare things surface in a small English village. Yeah, well, lots of rare things surface in strange places in this business, you know. Eh? No, I'm, uh, I'm not just a dealer, Lovejoy. I'm a scholar, historian in Hebrew studies. This Talmud here, published in Warsaw, 1789. The market value is not important. Its value is to the Jewish community. Thank you. Cheers. And cheers. 20%? <laughs> I must say, I do feel a little disloyal to Lovejoy. Oh, I understand absolutely how you feel. But you say that uh, there was no contract between you and Lovejoy? Uh, nothing on paper? Yeah. Not a thing. Just a vague promise. How about 22 and a half? Yes. Well, uh, well Lovejoy will be a teeny bit ruffled, I fear. Just a bit ruffled. 25%. All right, done. Excellent. But I want a quick sale and discreet. Dad, we'll find out everything when we meet the man. Mm. I bet it's all perfectly kosher. Kosher? Kosher? The man isn't here when he says he'll be here. He has half the Judaica in Poland here, in an English country cottage, and we don't have the misty idea how he come by it. 
Lovejoy tells us that it's Connor's late wife bought it in Leeds. <laughs> I haven't heard about such a sale. What is all this nonsense? This is our history. I have to know where it comes from. Oh, God forbid. I have thoughts. I have thoughts. You have my word that this will all be sorted out to your satisfaction, Mr. Solomon. I hold you to your word, young man. Can we talk about a price? 50,000 a lot, and I don't bargain with you. Dad, that's... Exactly the amount I was thinking of. I just want to return it to where it belongs. You have my word. Meanwhile, I'll bring this stuff up to London tomorrow. Don't suppose any chance of getting the 50 grand in cash, is there? <laughs> <laughs> Love joy. Where's his name from? Somewhere in the past, it was a left I think. <laughs> you got roots. <laughs> you hear him, Jonathan? <laughs> I like this boy. <laughs> nice little commission, Lovejoy. Yeah, it'll keep me in t shirts until something else comes along, Ted. What news on the wing commander? Well, he's probably not a wing commander for a start. The word is he's a chancer who's lived most of his life off wind. And that is perfect. The thing is, is the stuff knocked off? Nobody seems to know. Am I a moral philosopher? Hmm? I think not. Let's keep Stumm across all extremities. Cheers. Cheers. Hello there, love joy. Ah, shampoo. Someone leave you an inheritance or something? East Anglia is very big, Charlie. Could you find another part of it to occupy? What do you know about Judaica? I don't. It's not my field. How much would you give for an 18th century Torah pointer? I'm not the foggier. What's a Torah pointer? Well, it's not a gun dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I won't keep you. As the poet said, every man has business and desires such as they are. Nice to see you in such good form, Lovejoy. What's the matter, old love? What's he up to? He knows something I don't know. One set of Judaic in East Anglia. That's novel. Two sets? No. It's out of order. Here's your car keys, Lovejoy. Better later than never, eh? Yeah, look, I saw these two blokes at Lady Jane's right. Now, follow... Ah, my elusive client. Where were you this afternoon? I had some business, and you had no right to barge your way in here. Excuse me, we had an appointment. Anyway, the Solomons love this stuff. They don't want to split any of it up. I can drive it to London tomorrow and be back with 45 grand in the hand. What do you say? Yes, well, the fact is I've already sold the stuff on. We sold it and we had a deal. No, we had a conversation. We had a verbal agreement. That constitutes a deal. So, sue me. The fact is, I've decided to deal with... Gimbert. Ch Charlie Gimbert. All right, Charlie! Coming out! I know you're a man! Charlie! You could give crooked antique years a bad end. So Connaught turned the whole deal over to Charlie Gimbert. Gimbert? They didn't even know they knew each other. What the hell have they got in common, eh? Gimbert and Connaught, where would well, they know each other? What are you mumbling case? about, Lovejoy? Stop mumbling, will you? OK. So Connaught sold it all to Gimbert. Why? Why? Perhaps he gave him a better deal. Tinker? Excuse me? Something frightened him off. Have you told Solomons yet? I've been avoiding that journey. Yes. Undoubtedly. Bestimmt. What is? This is Krakow. Without a doubt. 
made by the finest goldsmith of the ghetto. He was called, funnily enough, Goldschmidt, because he was a goldsmith. <laughs> funny, that. Oh, is that funny? So, uh, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. My father repaired gold watches that he made. OK, it's Goldschmidt. If this all turned up in one go, in Leeds, in a collection, what would you say? I'd like to know how. I'd like to know how it got collected from all the houses in Krakow and collected up in Leeds. Because someone must have done it. Someone has to have brought it over, all of a piece together. And when did they do it? When isn't important. Who is important? When gets you who. You couldn't carry this stuff out in the 30s. The Nazis wouldn't let you. Wartime is impossible. And the 40 years of communism? Very difficult. The occupation after the war. Then there was chaos and free movement. Then, then, then you could move things. Nobody knew what was going on. A military solution? You twist my arm, I'll buy you a half. Are you all right, Eric? Have you slipped a disc or something? No, I'm fine. What are you having, Eric? Ah, no, I've got to go. No, 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 no. I have to buy you a drink first. No, really, I have to go. Eric! Right? Eric, you're depressed. Prison does that to you. I know these things. I've been there. It's at times like this, it's good to know that you needn't be alone. It's at times like this, it's good to have your friends around. That's yeah. right. You've been under a lot of strain. Now take it. Yes, mm. see, they're the blokes. They're the blokes who I've been following oh. with the burglar alarm scam. Look! What, Charlie? No, I've lost them now, haven't I? Give me that. You dare go back, Lovejoy. I'm gonna go straight to the law. What, what are you talking about, Charlie? You know what I'm talking about. My Judaica was stolen, and I know you did it. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, I do. When did this theft occur? Oh, you tell me. You committed the crime this afternoon. I've been here all afternoon with my friends. And very pleasant it's been, too. And you think that'll stand up in a court of law, do you, Lovejoy? It will, Charlie. This bunch of low-life rats. Hey, 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 Gary! Hey, Charlie! You can be banned for language like that. I want to get you that drink, Eric. Have a pint for my friend here. Well, we'll see, Lovejoy.
Ha ha ha! I found it! I found all the burgled stuff! Ha ha ha! I found it! You all right with that lot, Tink? <laughs> yeah, good, because otherwise I'd help you, you know. Hey, look, Joy! Huh? You're never gonna believe Eric, this! Eric, take it easy, you can burst a blood vessel! Oh, no, but I found it! Found what? I've got it, I've got it! You've got it? <laughs> you found it? <laughs> it's wonderful! <laughs> look, what the devil happened to you? Oh, it's a long story, Tink. In the lonely desert, a dishuman experience. Some things lift us above the stones of the earth and the beasts of the field. And today, that something is Eric. Oh, look at this. It's beautiful. Love, loyalty, and stamina all rolled into one. That's friendship. And that's beautiful, too. When it's combined with a handsome commission, it's even more beautiful. <laughs> Eric, you're beautiful. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Solomon, you're never going to believe this. <laughs> what do you got in the boot? Nothing. Is there a problem, officer? No problem. You're nicked. Mr. Solomon, Wing Commander Connaught. Mr. Connaught, you, you see Mr. Connaught at last. It's my son Jonathan, it's Mr. Heifetz, Mr. Horvitz. So, uh, how do you come by this stuff, anyway? I've already told Mr. Lovejoy. Don't give me none of this bull's blood. That stuff came from Krakow. Many houses and synagogues. You didn't get it from no Leeds or Manchester. Come on, what's the half-time score about this, eh? I assure you, the story I told Mr. Lovejoy... The story is right. More like a fairy story. So, you were one of the few, eh? Aria boy, eh? <laughs> Get away with you. You are black marketeer. Filling the cigarettes, the cans of beans, Yankee chocolate, anything else you can lay your hands on. Isn't that right, Mr. Flying Officer Schickelgruber, Mr. Mr. Prophet on the misery of others? This is an outrage. I agree, an outrage. That I would use military aircraft for such purposes. Another outrage, I agree. The whole thing is just one farrago of lies. I'm getting tired of agreeing with you, but I agree with you. An impossible five, the, what, the, the lies, what you said, the lies. Mr. Connor, we've researched your background. Don't waste I... words, just bounce him. I give you my word, as an officer of 212 Squadron, that this whole invention of Mr. Solomon's... You are the inventor, just bounce him. Perhaps Mr. Dill and I can settle this dispute. Oh, yes, we can settle the dispute. Just the truth from this man's lips will do the trick. Well, I knew Binky Buckingham, alas, no longer with us. He was commanding officer of 212 Squadron. What's this got to do with the price of bagels? Well, if he can prove that he knew Binky Buckingham, commanding officer of 212 Squadron... Of course then... I knew him. Everybody knew him. Lovely fellow, sort of the earth. If he were alive today, he'd back me to the hilt. <laughs> OK. You knew Binky. Yes. You knew him well. Yes. Now, tell me this. After his crash in 43, did he limp on his right leg or his left? After his prang in 43, well, I remember that well, but... Oh, which leg? Um, well, um... You see, he doesn't even know which leg Binky pranged up. Of course I don't know. It's bloody years ago now. Poor old Binky. What a lovely fellow. Well, it's really rather funny, you know, Binky Buckingham with the glorious 212 Squadron being such an old chum of yours. Because we've just invented him. There is no blinking Binky Buckingham. He's a figment of the imagination. Like your entire RAF career. No. No, it's not true. I, I, I've got the DFC. Doomcop, first class. <laughs> Buzz off back to the Volvo. There's good boys. Look, why don't you go inside and have a nice cup of tea? You don't want to stand around here taking the piss out of a broken down old lion. Take this stuff and put it in a museum. No profit for you, 
No profit for me. We need to remember. This, in truth, belongs to those who, who disappeared. You're all right, of course. I was a black marketeer. Pretended to be what I wasn't. Can you understand that? Of course I can understand. Those days of chaos and confusion after the war made it, made it difficult to know what was right. But I, uh, what I don't understand is why you denied you were a Jew all those years. How did you know? Well, <laughs> you know what they say. It takes one to know one. <laughs> Fresh. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Ting. Here he comes. Oh, dear. He won't be pleased to hear he's lost his commission. No, he won't. You can do with a commission yourself, love. Well, what's could. going on? I've come for the collection. What's the hitch? Oh, there's no hitch, Charlie. Do you want a cup of tea? I'm ruined, of course. They want to repossess my house. Yes, I heard that. But you're not on your own in these times. Look, give me a ring. I'll have a talk about Maybe I can find somebody to help you out. You never know. Be careful now. Wrap them properly, eh? Otherwise, you'll get scratched. You should be very careful how you wrap them. You've done this, love, Joe. I don't know how you've done it, but you've... You've done it. Charlie, it really does pay to increase your word power. Take, um, superfluous, hmm? Superfluous, redundant, supernumerary, unnecessary. In other words, your services are no longer needed, Charlie. You've done this, love, Joy, haven't you? Somehow, you've got him to hand over the stuff to Solomon. Huh? I'll have you. I'll have you. One day, soon, circumstances are going to arise, and I'm going to make you crawl. Oh, don't you worry, my fine friend. Huh? Every dog will have his day. It's just one thing I want to ask you, Jim. Don't ask me about kitchens. Since I started Esther's, I've already had three commissions. Uh, really? Mm. Well, actually, what I want to ask you about... You can say it? goodbye to your commission. Sometimes it's nice to give without thought of reward, Tink. Is it? Yeah, well, actually, old Solomon slipped me a token of his esteem. <clears throat> but not such a small token. Like a little esteem. I don't know whether I should ask you this, Jane, but where were you? That's not a question you ask a lady, Tink. Isn't it? Well, where were you and who were you with? All right, I suppose I'd better come clean. Oh, there's Eric, our hero. <laughs> now you'll never know. Oh. Eric. <laughs> really? <laughs> Did you hear that? What? 